The Q presents On the Ground. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special, exclusive On the Ground Cube coverage here at Oracle's headquarters. I'm John Furrier, the host of The Cube. I'm here with my guest, Brad Tuxbury, who's the Senior Director of Business Development for the Big Data team at Oracle. Welcome to the On the Ground. Thank you, John. Good to be here. So Big Data, Brad, you've been in this industry for a long time. You've seen the waves come and go. Certainly at Oracle, you've been here for you know, many, many years. Yep. Oracle's transforming as a company, and you know, you've been uh, you know, watching it play out. Yep. What is the big thing that's most notable to you that you could illustrate that kind of highlights the Oracle transformation in terms of of where it's come from. Obviously the database is the crown jewel, but you know, this big data stuff that you're involved in is really transformative and getting tons of traction. You got the cloud machine kind of tying in. Is this kind of a seminal moment for Oracle? Share some, some thoughts there. Yeah, I think you know, there's, there's many, you know, as the, if you look at the data management path from going back to client server to where we are today, um, you know, data's always paid, played a pivotal role, but I would say now what every customer is going through this uh, decision-making process where they're saying, aha, data, I'm being disrupted by all different companies. Before it was, you know, okay, I, I got my data in a, in a database and I do some reporting on it and I can run my business, but it wasn't like I was going to be disrupted by some digital company tomorrow. Because the apps and the databases were kind of tied together. Uh, they were tied together and, and you know, it, things thing. just didn't move as fast as they do today. Now it's, it's you know, in these digital-only companies, they realize that you know data is their business, right? I think one of the, the pivotal things that we've we've been doing some some studies with uh, MIT is that um, like eighty four percent of the S and P value of some of these companies comes from companies that have no assets, right? Just data. So you know, like Uber doesn't own any taxis, uh, Airbnb doesn't own any hotels yet. They've got massive valuation. So companies are starting to freak out a little bit, and they're starting to say, "Well, my God, I got to leverage my data." So the, the, the seminal moment here is saying, how do I monetize my data? Before it wasn't this urgency. Now there's a sense of like, I got to do something with this data. But the, the, the predicament they're in is, especially these legacy companies, they've got silos of, of stuff that's not talking to each other. It's all on different versions yeah. and different you know, vendors. And well, Oracle's always been in the database <laughs> business, so yeah. you made money by creating software to store data. Right. <laughs> now it sounds like there's a business model for moving the data around. Is that kind of <laughs> what I'm getting at here? So it's not just storing the data, software to store the data, it's yeah. software to make the data Yeah, it's, it's like three things. I think it's three things. It's ingesting the data, right, from new sources that we, you know, outside of the company, so sensors mm -hmm. and, uh, social media, right? That's one thing. Secondly, it's then managing the data, which we've always done. And then the third thing is it's analyzing it. So it's that that whole continuation. And then what's happened here is the management platform has expanded. It's gone from just a relational base to this whole NoSQL world and this uh, Hadoop world, which we completely support. And we, we're, we're by no means is this relational zero sum game, right? Where it's relational or nothing at all. It's we've expanded the whole data management platform to meet the criteria of whatever the application is. And so these are the three data management platforms today. Who knows what's going to come tomorrow? We'll support that as well. But the idea is choose the right platform for the application. And what it's really becoming about is applications, right? And this data management stuff is just, it's obviously table stakes, but I, how do I make my applications dynamic and real time based on what I have here? Four years ago, I mean, Cube audience will remember <coughs> we did the Cube in uh, 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 Hadoop World, that's called back then before it became Strata Hadoop and O'Reilly yeah. and Cloud Air Show. Uh, Mike Olson and um, uh, Ping Lee at Excel Party said, oh, we have a big data fund. So they thought there was going to be a tsunami of apps. Yeah. It never really happened. Uh, certainly Hadoop didn't become as big as people had thought, but yet analytics rose up. I mean, analytics became the killer app. Yeah. But now we're beyond analytics, yeah. the use of data for insights. Yeah. Where are the apps coming from now? You had Rokana here, we had Landisco providing yeah. some solutions. Where do you guys see the apps coming from? Obviously Oracle has their own set of apps, but outside yeah. of Oracle, where are the apps? So yeah, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon, right? It's uh, everyone thought Hadoop's the next great wave, and. Um, the reality is, if you go talk to customers, they're like, yeah, I've heard of Hadoop, but what do I do with it? So it's like apps are what's going to drive this whole stack forward. And to that end, um, the number one thing that people are looking for is 360 view of customer. They all want to know more about customer. I was talking with the customer who represents the equivalent of, 
the, the tax bureau of their country, and they, you know, they, instead of putting the customer, it's the taxpayer or the customers at the center and all the different places that you pay taxes. So they want to have one view of you as the taxpayer. So whether you're a public entity, private, um, the number one thing that, that the apps that people are looking for is show me more about customer. If I'm a bank, a retailer, they want to cross sell and they want to do that. That's, that's the number one app. Uh, in, in telcos, they want to know about networking. Mm -hmm. How do I get this network? Um, I want to understand what's going on here so I can better support my support center. Um, but um, secondary to that, you know, we're in this kind of a holding pattern now. What are the next set of apps? And, and so there's a bunch of startups here in Silicon Valley that are thinking they have the answer for that. And uh, we're, you know, partnering with them and we're opening up a, a cloud marketplace to bring them in and we'll let customers decide what, you know, who's going to win this. But Talk about Rokana and their yeah. value proposition. They're here talking to us today. Yeah. What's the deal with Rokana? So Rokana is, um, you know, an interesting play. What, what they um, have found is that customers, um, uh, one of the ways they talk about themselves is they offer a data warehouse to IT. So if I'm the IT guy, I want to go in and have basically a, a pool of all kinds of log analysis. You know, how are my apps running? Do I need to tune the apps? How's the network running? They want like a one bucket of, you know, how can I better, you know, make the, how, how can my operation perform better? Um, so what we've seen from Customers is they come to us and said, oh, okay, you know, what do you got in this new space of Hadoop that can do that? Look at log analysis and you know all kinds of app performance from a Hadoop perspective. They were you know one of the people that first persons that, to answer that. So they're having great success finding out where security breaches are, finding out where the network latencies are, uh, just better. Like I said, looking at logs and how the things could run better. So um, so that's what they're that's what they're answering for customers. Basically, improving IT functions, right? Because What's happening is a line of business people are in charge, right? And they're saying, I no longer want to uh, have to do, go to IT for everything. Um, I want to be able to do, you know, go to a uh, basically a data model and do my own analysis off this. I don't have to call IT for everything. Um, so these guys are, you know, in some ways trying to help that that, that mantra. So. Talk about WAN Disco. What are they talking about here? And how is their relationship with Oracle? They were speaking with us today as well. Yeah, so you know, there's in this big data world, what we're seeing a lot of is customers uh, do a lot of what we call lab experiment. So they got all this data and they want to do lab experiments. Okay, great. So then they find this nugget of, okay, here's a great you know, data model. We want to do some analysis on this. So let's turn it into a production app. Okay, then what do you do? How do you take it production? These are the guys that you would call. So they take it into an HA high availability environment for you. Um, and they give you, you know, zero data loss, zero downtime to do that. They, one of the things that Oracle's, you know, we're touting as a differentiator in our cloud is this hybrid approach, where you have, um, you know, you can start out doing test dev in the cloud, bring it back on-prem, vice mm -hmm. versa. They allow you to do that sync, that link between the cloud and, and on-prem. That's, they also, uh, you know, we work today with Cloudera, we OEM them in our big data appliance. If the customer has uh, Hortonworks, but they also want to work with our stuff, there go to go between uh, with that as well, so um, it's basically they're giving you that that um, production ready environment that you need when in an HA world. Brad, thanks for spending some time with us here on the ground. Really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm John Furrier. We're here exclusively on the ground at Oracle headquarters. Thanks for watching.